Uh, Dave Olson says, Hi, Bill. My new job gives me a lot of windshield time, and when I'm out of podcasts to listen to, I exploit my unlimited data plan to rewatch the Stratosphere launch from the beginning. Don't worry, I start each episode when I'm at a stop and then play them through the... See more? Vans, the Vans audio system. You have a van? A van. Uh, best times of my life in a van when I was a kid. Um, and then play them through the Vans audio system with my phone face down on the passenger seat. Episode 29 was on not long ago, and I have two quick questions. Number one, what happened to the classic uh, TSL uniform of dark blazer and white shirt? <laughs> and number two, now that you are firmly and happily ensconced in marriage to the lovely and gracious Natasha, will you reveal the name of the starlet you were dating at this time around mid-2013? I will not. Um, and... Um, And looking back on that, it took me a second to see if I could even remember what the name was. Um, that was, you know, I was I just gotten the new car and the new office and the company and I was starting to get a little famous, 2013, 12, somewhere around there. And... Uh, and I was starting to starting to understand women and starting to understand the whole dating thing, and I was so proud of myself. And I I I I look back on it now, um, the same way I look back on hiding underneath the cushions on the sofa. Um, that's what it feels like to me. After I met Natasha, I look back on, on all of these things and all these relationships and all these things that I did prior to meeting her. And I look at them all and I think about how I felt at the time. And now I look back at it and realize you, you were lying on the couch with a, with a cushion over your head thinking that people couldn't see you. But in point of fact, it was a very small thing and not a very serious thing to be um, proud of. But I was proud of it, and I was, you know, feeling like finally somebody was listening to me after, you know, 45, 50 years, and, um, yeah, and it was the first new car I've ever owned. I still drive it. Uh, it's uh, six years old now. I still love it. Um, but it was, it was, it was adolescent, it was adolescent pride and, and the kind of thing that I should have gone through when I was 16, 17, 18 and didn't. And then there's all kinds of things I should have gone through in my 20s and 30s and 40s that I didn't go through either. And then I met uh, my wife and I just, it's a, it's a sad, sad statement that many people will not get this reference, but it was like difference between me before I met Natasha and after I met Natasha is like the difference between a Jiffy Pop uh, before and after um, it's finished. Microwave popcorn has killed Jiffy Pop and, and that's a shame because Jiffy Pop was the coolest stuff in the world for those of you under a certain age who it's hard to believe that no one knows what Jiffy Pop was but before microwave ovens, before microwave popcorn there was something called Jiffy Pop and it came in a looked like a little skillet like a, made out of heavy duty foil with a wire handle and since there were no microwaves, and since you can't put metal in a microwave, inside of the Jiffy Pop was a series of, like, butter. And, and the, the, the whole thing was completely flat on the top, had kind of a spiral pattern on it like this. Absolutely flat. You turn on your stove, you put your, um, put your Jiffy Pop on there, shake it up a little bit, and as these things start to pop... They're not only creating more space, but they're also releasing gases. And over time, it's same, same kind of sound as in a microwave. This 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 thing would just kind of come up and and untwist and and it go from being absolutely flat to the time it's done to being like this enormous, you know, more than a hemisphere. It's just it's just enormous, enormous, huge improvement in in volume, and and that's how I feel. Uh, you know, I feel like. Um, I feel like everything I did before I met Natasha was uh, Jiffy Pop before I put um, before I put it on the oven, and and now I feel like Jiffy Pop uh, when you when you open that foil up, you know, when that just that wave of heat and butter hits you, you know, it's a pretty awesome feeling actually. So it was great. Um, so anyway, um, that's about it, I guess. 
And it could have been an hour and 45 minutes, something like that. So it's time for this one to go home. What's that from? Is that from, he's not about a time for this one too. Was that from Rocky and Bullwinkle or something? Anyway, um, I am, uh, thank you for the comment about the haircut. Thank you. Uh, I am um, about to turn off the lights here and then um, head home. So in this analogy, Natasha is the heat. You got it. Known miscreant Matt Lloyd. She's the light and the heat and the electricity and uh, the power and uh, uh, never had anyone take care of me before and neither is she so works out pretty well. Uh, so that'll do it I guess for today. I'm going to shut this damn thing down and um, if only Foghorn, I mean um, Viper Check, if only Viper Check would just do the fundamentals, just the bare bones basics of whipping me into getting this thing on to which we could cut out all this nonsense. But I guess he just doesn't have the chops for it, doesn't have the stomach or the, or maybe he doesn't have the, the will or perhaps he just doesn't have the intellect for it. I don't know. In any, in any event, it's not getting done. And the reason that I'm not getting Twitch done is because it's his fault. Hope I made that clear. All right, so um, that'll do it. Um, and I am now going to begin the uh, deactivation process of shutting down the seven buttons that are, uh, yeah, big talk there from a guy who's a long way away and not flying F-16s with guns on him anymore. Um, I am going to be um, hitting the numerous buttons to end this thing of episode number, whatever it happens to be. I will get it up on YouTube right away, and then I will head home. So that'll do it once again. Thanks to your to the membership, and I know I I saw the comments. I know what people are feeling, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try very hard to do better. Natasha's telling me this all the time. I'm just I'm I'm, I'm just fixated with with this, and I feel like we have very little time. You know, very little time to go start changing people's minds and showing that it works. And if it works, and you can show that it works, then presumably you can get enough money to actually go out and. Um, and do movies, TV shows, all of the things that would be necessary to change the culture. Because our story is more interesting than theirs is by an order of magnitude or two. They just never tell it. In fact, when they try to tell their stories, they end up telling our stories. And, and for people that don't understand the power of things like these um, computer-generated videos or movies or or TV, if you don't understand the power of it because you don't watch a lot of movies or TV or whatever the case may be, I would just remind you that the Bible is nothing but a set. And the reason the Bible is such a masterpiece of literature and the Quran, for example, is virtually unreadable is because the Quran is full of commandments and edicts and instructions. The Bible is full of stories. And the stories are what we learn from. That's where we learn. The prodigal son, the good Samaritan, uh, all of these stories are where we learn wisdom. And that's when you can see uh, the power of Christianity and, uh, and Judaism to some extent too, is that the, the stories make the morality understandable and accessible and personal and I've been singing this tune since I started doing this and finally I have in my uh, greasy little paws the means to have a little puppet show and uh, and I'm and I'm <laughs> I'm the only person on the planet uh, a lot of support from Natasha a lot of support from a lot of you uh, Foghorn and known Miss Grant out there are also enormously uh, important parts of this but nobody sees what I see Nobody sees the finished product the way I see the finished product. And when you do see the finished product, um, I hope those of you who've, who've uh, really had a problem with me spending so much time on this, I hope you understand uh, what it is. Well, you will understand what it is I'm trying to do. I hope, I hope that that point anyway, it will start to make sense that this, is, that this thing had to basically be done by one person by himself because we just don't have the means to do that. And some people mention hiring young people. There's nothing I would rather do than get this than get a small studio of young conservative 
animators, video editors, writers and stuff and, and put a footprint down and start building some kind of foundation for the future of this country. Um, and we love the founders, we love the country, we love the history of the country because of the stories we were told. We were told the story of Paul Revere, we are told the story of um, John Adams defending the British at the at the Boston Massacre. We're told the we're told the, the story of Robert E. Lee's surrender. We're told the lot. We're told the story of men going ashore on, on Normandy and Iwo Jima. We're told all these stories. We weren't there. We didn't see it, um, and we didn't get it in a brochure. We didn't have to go find some institute to hear about um, what happened on Iwo Jima. We learned about what happened on Iwo Jima from the people who were on Iwo Jima who came back and told us about Iwo Jima. But most of us had the experience of what happened on Iwo Jima because people who, who were there were able to convince people who weren't there to make a movie about what it was like when you were there. And that's why I feel like after watching Private Ryan, I certainly don't pretend to be able to say I know what it was like I know what was what the emotions were on the beach, but I feel like after watching Private Ryan, I at the very least have a pretty good sense of what of what it looked like. And it looked horrifying enough, and it looked horrifying when I'm sitting in an air controlled air conditioned controlled dark room with, you know, three thousand other peaceful humans eating popcorn and, and, and M Ms, you know, and, and sipping Coke. Even under those conditions, being on the beach at Normandy is horrifying beyond my ability to um, understand. So to go through, to go through, um, to go through that, and to understand the history of this country, understand and love the military the way I love the military. A lot of that is based on the military people I know. But a lot of it is based on the fact that I have seen artists portray what real people do in such a way as to make me feel like on some level I was there or at least saw what they saw. And that is, um, and that is, uh, that is that. Okay, so that's about it. So uh, we begin the uh, shutdown process and we, uh, once again, thanks for our members who've been so patient and so uh, generous and understanding as always and um, you just simply couldn't be here without them. So uh, thank you for that. And then um, I will see the rest of you, I think I'll be here next, next Wednesday. Uh, we're going out of town Monday and Tuesday. Uh, it is the two year anniversary of, um, of our engagement on the 6th, night of the 6th and the 7th, right at midnight, just by accident. She was born on April 6th. I was born on April 7th, six months to the day away, to the hour, pretty much. So it was, it was lovely. But I should be back on Wednesday and be able to do stress for lunch next week. Okay, so that'll do it. Um, and, uh, and with that, we will now say goodbye to our YouTube fans and uh, friends. So uh, you be careful out there, and we'll see you soon.